Uh, I'm just going to start with one thing that I, that I saw earlier today that got my dander up. Um, you know, and this, this happens periodically. I'm a New York Knicks fan. Only by proximity of uh, where I grew up. And they were good when I was young. Why were they good? Two men in particular. I would say primarily Bernard King in my early years was a one-man wrecking crew. But then later, the years that everybody remembers, Patrick Ewing, number 33 out of Georgetown. Hall of Famer Patrick Ewing. I saw, now he's the coach of uh, Georgetown University. I saw that <laughs> Patrick Ewing recently returned to the garden, presumably as in, you know, in that role as coach of Georgetown. And he was stopped by security. Now, how the hell do you stop Patrick Ewing at Madison Square Garden? I don't care that he's 55 or 60 or whatever the hell he is. You know who Patrick Ewing is if you work at the garden. And if you don't, you're fired. How the hell... How does he have to produce any credentials? Isn't there anyone manning or personing the gates that can identify number 33, Patrick Ewing? He's seven feet tall for starters. And he's got the face of an angel. How do you not recognize number 33, Patrick Ewing? I mean, I am incensed. I don't care about the Knicks anymore, by the way. And this all starts with owner James Dolan, the stepchild of Charles Dolan, who made his fortune uh, in cable vision. And he was like, I, I very much liken him to George W. Bush. He's like the dumb son who lucked into, uh, you know, his position. Just like George W. failed his way to the top, uh, had his you know, fuck ups, his battles with addiction, no judgment on addiction, but judgment on being a dick. James Dolan uh, has run this franchise into the ground since the 90s. His father gave him Madison Square Garden. to That was his plaything. He figured, like, I'm not going to trust him with the real business. You can fuck around with Madison Square Garden, the Knicks, the Rangers, Ringling Brothers, whoever comes through. And man, he has, he has fucked it up. He's turned everything into a circus. Now, Patrick Ewing, while probably the greatest Nick of all time, you know, I mean, you can make an argument for Walt Clyde Frazier. Perhaps Willis Reed. Some might argue Bernard King, but his, his, his great years were, were too brief. Brought down by an ACL that nearly brought down my... My childhood. But Patrick Ewing is, is probably the, the greatest, among the greatest Knicks, let's say, because Clyde and, and uh, Willis both had two championship rings. So I'll, I'll, I'll give a nod to them. But Patrick is not even the only one who's received this treatment. Charles Oakley famously was dragged out of the garden. <laughs> Another Knicks icon of the 90s. Dragged out of the garden by security. Dragged out. Because he's been in a, a war of words with James Dolan. Now, I don't care if, if, if Charles Oakley takes a piss on, on the, the garden floor. You don't eject him. You don't have security drag him out. You, you, know, you figure out a way... You know, like the, like the old Native Americans, you just have the current Knicks form a circle around him and um, give feedback. You say, you know, we don't, condone, we don't condone that behavior. Just, you know, the, the tribe shames him into recognizing his ba behavior is, uh, is, is inappropriate. So that's how I would handle it. Have the current Knicks form a circle and... Uh, offer their feedback to Charles. But that's not how, how James Dolan handled it. No, he called in security and NYPD to drag 
Charles Oakley out of Madison Square Garden. Can you believe that? Nick's icon. I mean, like anyone who has played for the franchise, <laughs> there should be an open door policy. Like, come in. Our team stinks. Maybe you'll remind us that we, you know, you'll, you'll remind the fans that we used to be good. Unbelievable. So that was a black eye. And you wonder why the Knicks can't attract top tier free agents. Who the hell? Word travels. Word gets around amongst players that they're a, they're a rinky dink garbage franchise with an owner <laughs> who not only doesn't allow legends into the building without credentials, he has them arrested and thrown out. And thirdly, uh, honorary Nick, obviously not a player, but Spike Lee received similar treatment recently in the last year or so where Spike Lee, who, I mean, come on, if you don't recognize Spike Lee, he's about four feet tall, dressed in orange and blue, glasses to match. Who doesn't know Spike Lee? Especially at the Garden. The guy attends every game for the last 25 years. Got into it with Reggie Miller on the court. He's like the unofficial Knicks mascot. How does anyone working security not recognize Spike Lee or tell him that he, you know, apparently he came in through the entrance that he's been coming in through for forever and they changed something and like the person didn't know him or whatever the hell happened. So there was another debacle where Spike Lee got into it with, with Nick's security because they wouldn't let him into the building. Now, you could ask yourself, what do all three of those men have in common? Hmm. Let's think. Let's think long and hard about that. Could it be that they're all black men? Couldn't be that. No. No. Why, why would... Why do you got to make everything about race? Unbelievable that, you know, they, those three guys should have the ability to hire and fire not only security staff, but ownership. There's an ownership group right there. I want Patrick, Charles, and Spike. You know those shitty... Capital One commercials that Spike does with uh, Samuel L. Jackson and Charles Barkley. I hate, uh, yeah, I mean, look, you guys know how I feel about the banks. So anyone who shills for them galls me. But it would have that same kind of vibe, is what I'm saying. Those, uh, those Capital One commercials. We could get Charles, Patrick, and, uh, and Spike on a road trip. And I tell you, by the end of that road trip, the Knicks ship would be righted. That is our new ownership group. Just a, just a nice coast-to-coast -coast road trip. Hash things out. Turn the roster over. Dolan's obviously out. A whole new security team. So, you know, that's, that's what I had to... Uh, that's, what I ha that's what I had to delve into. How dare, how dare you? Charles Dolan, if you're watching, let's call this our how dare you segment. How dare you, Charles Dolan, disrespect the man who built Madison Square Garden as we know it. Patrick Ewing, number 33 out of Georgetown. No, you, not familiar? Take a look up in the rafters, Charles. Crane that fat little neck of yours, 45 degrees and take a look up there and pay respect. Get down on your knees and pay respect to Patrick Ewing. And number 34, his enforcer, Charles Oakley. Kiss the ring, though neither of them want a ring, granted. <laughs> but Walt Frazier and Willis Reed will, will gladly step in and, and, and provide rings for you to kiss. Isn't that just emblematic of, of the problem with the billionaire class that owns everything that has no respect for the people who build it and the fact that there are three, three black men 
just makes it that much more mwah, beautiful. Call the cops on them. Call security. Get them out. Right? Just so, so three chubby white guys who, who, who used to be NYPD and now just get paid to sit and watch Knicks games. Cushy jobs, you know? They'll be there for 40 years. And, and, and Patrick Ewing can't even get in the building. 